What's up folks, Spencer here. I wanted to quickly walk you through my React Native development environment. Uh, getting started, my actual terminal, I use iTerm2. And if you look at it, this is all it looks like. If you've taken any of my courses, React Native School or React Native by example, uh, you've likely seen me work in this. I don't know much about the terminal. I just do the bare basics with it. Uh, I customized it once and just kind of left it that way since then. So I can see where I am in the project and I can see my Git branch. That's all I need to know. And then I can do all of my, I can open my editor. I can run the React Native app. I can interact with all my NPM scripts, whatever I need to. Uh, that's pretty much it. I keep it super bare bones. That's iTerm2 and oh my ZSH. Uh, I think I'm using the Agnoster theme for iTerm2. So now the bigger thing, the thing I spend 90% of my time in is Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is my editor of choice. I've been using it for a couple years now. Uh, before that I used Atom and before that I used Sublime. So Visual Studio I've been super happy with. It's a good, uh, good medium between a uh, basic text editor, which I, I like, and then a full-blown IDE, which um, they're nice, but I've never really used one, so I feel like when I use more comprehensive editing environments or IDEs, I don't really leverage everything you're getting, um, and the the weight of using those IDEs sometimes outweighs the benefits I'm taking from it. So Visual Studio Code has been a nice medium of very comprehensive and customizable, but still quick and easy and light to work with. So Visual Studio Code, my actual configuration, if we go over to Visual Studio Code, there's a handful of packages that I use that are directly related to React Native development. First off, Atom Keymap, kind of this is where I really started diving into development and learning different uh, commands. So a lot of the key maps that I learned in Atom, I've just carried over to VS Code. Uh, looking down, Code Spell Checker, I spell things wrong a lot. So it, it's a nice little thing I use there. Uh, color Highlight. This allows me to, let me just go ahead and open a file in this project. This allows me to do something like this, and it'll just go ahead and highlight that color for me. I use it pretty often, and it makes visualizing things a lot easier, especially in courses. Uh, let's see. I've got a handful of just the default ones. ESLint I use all of the time. I'm kind of a stickler for what my code looks like. So if we were to go in here and say, do something you're not allowed to, you're going to see these squiggly red lines showing up that there's an error here. I can say if true, or if I'm doing something invalid like I am with this hook right here, it's going to tell me I'm doing something wrong. It's a nice way to ensure your code looks consistent and it's a quick way to check for some bugs, just syntax-based bugs. If we keep scrolling, I've got flow in here. I don't really use that GraphQL I use for server stuff. Jest I use for testing. Uh, it does all kinds of different stuff, including autocomplete. So I like this uh, to get up and running in there. Um, actually, the auto, sorry, that's Jest. That's the testing library so I can work with tests in there. I don't use it too often. I typically just work with tests through the command line, but just snippets I do use because it gives me a handful of snippets where we'll see if it works outside of an actual test. But if you use different keywords, you can start getting these different describe blocks, uh, which I like to use. Once you memorize a few of them, it does save a fair amount of time. Continuing down, next thing, this is my most common question, what theme do I use? I use Night Owl. It's a wonderful theme. Uh, it's dark, it's got a lot of contrast in it. It works well. Uh, chose it years ago and just, I stick with it. Uh, let's see, scrolling down, NPM IntelliS IntelliSense. That's going to give you things like, when I import from React Native, I can also it's going to know touchable highlight is another thing that's available. So I like NPM IntelliSense for sure. Path IntelliSense, same thing. It's just for local projects. So if I were to do an import uh, from dot forward slash API, I'm going to know that API exists in there. It's another convenient thing to have. Continuing down prettier code, that's helping me Whenever I save a file, it's going to make sure it matches a certain format that I like. Keeps, again, just like ESLint, it keeps everything uh, 
formatted in the same way, very consistent and clean. Uh, it makes it easier to read it, and if it's easier to read code, it's easier to debug. Going down to rainbow brackets, this is one I kind of forgot I even had. I've just gotten so used to it. But you can see here, uh, I've got brackets here. If we go over to somewhere else, let's see. So if we look in here, we can see I've got this yellow bracket. I've got kind of a light tan green bracket over here. Basically, this is allowing me to see where these different different brackets line up. When I find a bracket with the same color as this one, like down here, I know those two are related to each other. Or these parens here, they're the same color, they're related to each other. Just makes parsing code easier. If I can parse code easier uh, visually, I can debug it easier. Uh, React Native React Redux snippets, that allows me to do things like IMR, which is going to extend to import React or IMRN, where I can then go ahead and just get autocompletes for a lot of common things I use. Um, continuing on, let's see. SVG viewers, if if you've got SVGs in your project, that's a nice one. To do highlight, if you've ever seen my projects, you'll often see that. Um, and I write to do in that specific format because it's going to highlight and it's just, again, easy for me to quickly parse and look at. VS Code icons. It's just a nice little thing. It changes the icons over here so you can kind of see what you're looking at. I've got my app, components, config, constants, util. It's just going to change icons for you uh, for a directory and for a file type. Uh, VS Code styled components. I use that every now and then, so I've just got syntax highlighting set up in there. Uh, so that's basically the, those are all the packages I've got installed. And then looking over here to my user snippets, if I go into my, JavaScript JSON. Again, I keep things really, really simple. I've just got a setup where if I type LG, it's going to expand to console.log. If we go into my index.js, LG, expand to console.log. That's it. I'm not super tied to any editor, so I like to keep things really light, really quick, really simple. And being an educator, uh, I tend to want to keep my envi development environment relatively simple so there's not a ton of magic going on as I'm just doing my normal development. I want to go through the same process everyone who's watching my videos are. But uh, that's my development environment currently. Uh, I don't think it's really changed much in the last year or two, so uh, this should age decently well. Uh, hopefully you found that beneficial. Maybe you found a package or two to throw into your VS Code setup so that you can improve your React Native development environment. If you're interested in learning React Native development, uh, definitely check out React Native by Example or React Native School. I have both of those linked down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.